Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be using GIMP 2.10 to create a double exposure image. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is download a few pictures. I'm going to open up the web browser and go to Pixabay. I'm going to click free download and select the highest resolution and click download here. If it, when you click download, if it doesn't allow you to download that version, it means you have to create an account here. So you can just log in with your Facebook page or you can go ahead and create an account with Pixabay. The images are free to download. So we're going to download this picture as well. And we'll click highest resolution and click download. So we've got two pictures. Both these images I'll put links to in the YouTube description. I'm going to open this folder on my desktop and just drag and drop these two pictures into here. And we'll minimize the web browser and let's open up GIMP software. So we need this folder open on our desktop. And the first thing we'll do is go to File New. And we'll set the width to 1920, the height to 1080. Click on Advanced. Set the resolution here to 72 DPI for the X and Y. And Fill With Transparency. Here, select Fill With Transparency. Then go ahead and click OK. So we've got a basic transparent background now and a canvas here and we're going to go to the folder on my desktop and drag and drop the picture of the landscape into GIMP and we're going to hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out and you can use the middle mouse button to pan the canvas or this uh, this this canvas around on the screen to center it out and this little yellow dotted line represents the actual size of the background image and this is this little square in the middle is actually the size of our artwork you can think of it that way and what I want to do is click on the uh, scale tool here. This is the scale tool and I want to reduce the opacity of this picture and it will make sense why I'm reducing the opacity in a moment. So I'm going to set it to around 60, 50, 60 percent, doesn't really matter, something around there of this first layer and we'll click on the image here. Now when I click on the image I can see the background here. Can you see the little dotted squares? That's our canvas size. So if I don't reduce the opacity I won't be able to see that basically. So you want to set the opacity to around 50%, somewhere around 50, so you can see the canvas background. Now when you click and drag, you can work out that that's way too far, you, and you want to leave a gap around the edge. So you want to leave like a little gap around this edge here, like this. And we'll click Scale, and then we'll set the opacity all the way back up to 100. Now let's middle mouse click to get the canvas in the center, and then we'll go back to the folder, and we'll drag and drop the picture of this woman into GIMP. And this image is way too large, so we hold the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out a little. And again, we'll set the opacity down. We'll click on the image and we'll click on this yellow handle to scale that one down. And we're going to scale it to around this size here. This size should be pretty good, somewhere around this size. And we'll click scale and then we'll set the opacity all the way back up to 100. Okay, let's go to File, Save As. And I'm just going to save this uh, GIMP file. So it's going to be called 01.cfx. It's going to save that into the folder on my desktop. So I'm just going to overwrite this one that I have there at the moment. And the first thing we want to do is remove the white background here of this picture. So let's click on this top canvas or the top image here in the layers. And let's click on the magic wand tool and then click on the image anywhere in the white area and set the threshold to around 25 is a good number 25. So we'll click here and then we'll press Control X or go to Edit Cut. And that will cut out all the white background, most of it, yeah? And now we can go to um, select and then we'll go to none. So we deselect everything on this image. Now, if you look carefully, you can still see like, um, like a white outline around the picture. You can see like around the image. We can get rid of that quite quickly. What we do is select the image, right click on it and do alpha to selection. So that will basically reselect this image. And we'll go to select and we're going to shrink the selection, shrink it. And we're going to shrink it by four pixels. So just type number four here and then click OK. That's going to now select inside of the image slightly. You can see that's probably a little bit too much. So let's go back to select. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Shrink. Uh, we'll probably have to grow the selection now. So let's go to select grow and we'll grow it by two pixels and click OK. So that's probably going to be better just around the edge here. Yeah, something like that. Should be pretty good. 
okay so now what we want to do is go to edit copy and then go to new layer here create new layer this bottom left icon and then we'll set that to transparency and click OK and then go to edit paste and then click on this anchor and then you can hide this second layer hide it now you can see the cutout image it's pretty good cutout we have to do a little bit of tidying up but what we can do is click on this image here and drag it to the bottom right at the very bottom because it's, it's basically our original image before we cut around it so we'll leave it down there if we want to use it for reference later we can have it so let's just try and tidy up this image really quick we can use the mouse wheel and the uh, control key in the mouse wheel to zoom in let's click on the eraser tool in the brushes select the softest brush which is 0 to 5 hardness and we'll set the size a bit bigger and we can just go let's zoom right in here let's set the size a bit smaller and let's see we need to click on the top layer and then we can just get rid of some of these white highlights down the edge here really it's done a pretty good job so our tidy up will be super quick here let's just see down this side I think on this hair I'm going to get get rid of some of this down here and that's it we're done maybe a little bit across the top here the few pixels the few white pixels here and that's it job done so we cut around that image pretty quick let's go to file save as and I like to save my work in stages so once I've completed something and I'm happy with it I save it as a stage and then if I want to refer back to the image at a certain stage I can always go back and look at it so let's click on the move tool and let's middle mouse click middle mouse click to pan the canvas and what we want to do is click on this landscape this is the background click on the landscape here create a new layer and in that layer we want to set the fill to white set it to fill with white and click OK so now we've got a white background really this background here we can hide it we don't need it this one so these two we can hide them yeah these two here so we're left with these three layers let's click on the top layer right click on it and then do alpha to selection again and that will just select around this person here and we'll go to edit and we'll do copy then we'll click on the white layer here and go to edit clear and if we hide this top layer we can see a cutout now of that white background so it's really cut out that silhouette let's go to select a none and it will remove the selection and then enable the white layer the, the layer above just turn that back on and select that top layer and go to mode and select multiply now you can see the two layers kind of faded together you can think of it that way right transition together so let's click on this top layer let's go to file save as and we'll save this as version 3 and we'll select the top layer here and we'll go to color desaturate and then click desaturate here and that's going to basically make it grayscale the image the top image and in the mode we're going to leave it on luminance here and click OK now what we want to do is um, let's see we want to now go to color levels and inside levels let's just do that again go to color levels and then grab this right handle and drag across to the left I'm going to brighten up the image a little bit to around around here somewhere roughly around here and then click OK and now what we can do is click on this middle layer this white one and we can reduce this opacity and as we reduce the opacity the original background is going to show through you can see and we want it to be quite um, subtle the background if you bring the opacity all the way down you're going to see it like this you can have it like that if you want but I kind of like the background just visible and then the image overlaid on top like this and I think that looks pretty cool so we can click on this background here landscape and we can click on the move tool and remember we made the background um, slightly larger if we click on it can you see the the yellow dot It's bigger than the canvas 
And the reason why we made it bigger than the canvas is now we can click on that background and move it around to position it where we like it. So we can get the mountains or we can get the, uh, the image in a certain way. And I want to position it around here, so maybe a bit lower. And this is Again, this is down to your own preference, right? So maybe around here looks pretty good. Something around here. Like this, and you kind of got the mountains like highlighting the eyes like this. So I think that looks pretty cool. Let's go to File, Save As, and save it as version 4. And a couple of notes. You can actually click on this top layer, click on the Move tool, and select that layer. Then hold down the Shift key and the arrow, and you can move this image, right? But wherever you move this image, you need to actually move the white canvas as well. So when you click on that one, you need to hold down the Shift key, click on the canvas, right? And you need to move that as well. You have to be a bit careful because you can see this white background showing here now. So you have to fill that space in if you wanted to move the silhouette of the picture. So really for now, I think what we'll do is leave it in the center. So I'm just going to press Control Z and Control Z just to undo that. And that's pretty much about it. That's your double exposure done. You can experiment with it more. What you can do is um, you can go to the top layer, this top one. You can go to color and then you can go to the saturation. And you can reduce the um, let's see not the saturation let's go to color let's make sure we've got the top one selected right and then go to color uh, I think it's exposure yeah and then you can play around with the black level you can see how that's affecting the image you can reduce the black level to fade um, this image in, so you can fade it in more, and you can do the same with the exposure. You can experiment with that to fade it or get it quite dark. This is again down to your own preferences. I think around here looks pretty good, something like this. We'll click OK, we'll click back on this background, and then we'll just drag it, I think, to around... I think around just around here looks pretty cool let's go to file save we'll save it as version 5 and then let's go to file export and we're going to export it we're going to click here and we want to export it as a JPEG file so select JPEG click export and then set it to 90% compression and click export and if we minimize GIMP, we've got all of our original make files. So we can go back to any of these at any of the stages and we can go back and open them and edit them at that certain point. And we can go ahead and click on this picture here and open it and we can see the double exposure. Now, one nice thing you can do is you can go back to your web browser and you can go back to Pixabay and we can search for something like city. Let's search for, search for Japan, right? So you've got all these nice sort of colored pictures, maybe something like this. Let's see what else is here. Let's see what else we can find. Japan is pretty cool, right? So maybe we'll use something like, um, let's see. <clears throat> let's use something like this. Where's that image gone? Let's try this one. Let's click free download. We'll download the highest resolution. And we'll drag and drop that into this folder. Then we can open up GIMP software again. So we've still got our GIMP file open. We can hide this background, hide this one. And we can go to our folder, drag and drop the new background into GIMP. And then we've got a completely different effect here now, right? So we can click on that image and we can reposition it to where we think it looks good maybe somewhere around here and you can experiment with the <clears throat> with the exposure and this I'll pass it here to work out what's going to look good and you can also click on the modes here the mode here for this top layer so when you click on the top layer if you click on mode you can do like soft light you can do uh, hard light 
so you can get these sort of effects as well so you can go and experiment with this drop down here and the different background and that's going to change and affect the image as well as well so you've got things like um dodge you can really experiment with this and come up with some really creative artwork it's really down to you what you what you think looks good there's no golden rules to say what's right or wrong it's down to your own preference what you like so I, I usually play around with these and find something that I like you can play around with the settings maybe vivid looks quite good it's quite arty right vivid something like this it's a bit different uh, maybe linear is quite good as well hard mix looks a bit strange but if you're doing some sort of poster design and you want some sort of art sort of style like this you know something like this might work um, so let's try one let's try uh, overlay and let's um, let's see let's click on this uh, background let's just move it slightly it's quite busy this background so I don't think this image is the best image let's hide it for now let's go back to that image was quite busy you want something that's not too busy really to be fair so let's try something uh, a little less busy maybe something like um, let's see so we've already done mountains so let's not do mountains again let's do something like uh, maybe something like this look pretty cool got this one with like the clouds let's try you don't want anything too dark as well you want something with a bit of light light in it right nothing too dark so maybe let's try this flower one let's download this let's see how that comes out so i want to drag that into this folder and then drag that into gimp so here that one that one works a lot better um it's a much lighter image and it's less busy images that are too busy and have got too much things going on in them then it might be a bit more difficult to see the silhouette and the, the face and everything right so this one we can actually reduce in size let's click on it let's just reduce its opacity so we can resize it and see what we're sizing to and we'll set the opacity back up and then you can just experiment <laughs> and move it around let's just use the move tool maybe you get like the flower or you can have it over here something like this i think looks pretty cool around here I quite like, like the colors there that looks quite, quite cool and i think um on this particular one you would set the opacity up much higher maybe even set it to white so then it's just white on blue like this just like this so the white background will be completely white so i like that let's go to file save and save that as version 6 and then we'll export this one as well file export as and we'll export that as version 6 image as well let's click export and export it let's close down GIMP and close down the web browser and then we've got these two images now so we've got this one and then we've got this example this was the same one this one over here so you can see how we can create these double exposure images and you can create any sort of style like this i'm going to be doing some more tutorials using gimp uh, i haven't used it for a little while so i thought i'd make some tutorials and learn something new myself today and i want to share that knowledge with you like usual so the reason why i created this as 1920 by 1080 is we can now just go ahead and click on this picture right click on it and then just say set as desktop background and it will be exactly the right size for my desktop 1920 by 1080 is exactly the right size so that's why we created it at that particular resolution okay so that's the end of this tutorial i hope you find it useful and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp web tutorial